Hello again and welcome to episode 9 in our series about the energy retrofit of the old cottage next to the Greeny flat. In our last episode we were talking about passive solar design and how we apply it in an ideal situation such as we have in the Greeny flat and how it can also be applied to an existing building. In a situation where we've got limited potential for passive solar, what do we do? Well, let me just uh, reach into my little passive solar design bag of tricks and we'll see what we can do with a thing called a trom wall. Now what's a trom wall? Well, to explain that, I need to go back to the drawing board. Okay, so let me just uh, draw a quick section cut through the north wall of the Greeny Flats. So if this, is, if this is our ground level here, and this is our concrete floor slab here. So this is what's called a slab on ground construction. And then this would be our wall frame. And this is our roof, which in our case is a SIPS panel roof, S-I-P-S, which stands for Structural Insulated Panel System. Uh, and you can look that up on our website, but it's an insulated roof. And then let's add the gutter here. All right, now, the, the basics of passive solar, if you remember from last week, let's add a, a window in here, which we have full height windows on the north wall of the Greeny flat. So in winter time, the low angle sun, let me just change color. In winter time, the low angle sun comes right in underneath the eave overhang and comes all the way in and heats this whole section of the floor. And during the day while the sun's shining, the heat goes down into the floor and into the ground below the floor. And that thermal mass of the floor and the ground stores the heat so that at night when the sun's not shining, the heat comes back out again and it helps keep the house warm. So it helps to regulate the temperature. Now in the summertime, when the sun's high in the sky, the eave overhang, including the gutter, is enough to stop that sun from shining in at all. So that's what keeps the place cool in the summer. Now, the key thing here uh, uh, that relates to trom walls is the thermal mass of the floor. So an, an alternative way of achieving thermal mass in a passive solar building is to build another wall here and if this is a, a masonry wall, then the sun can shine in onto that wall during the day and heat all the masonry in that wall. Um, you can also add vents through the wall so that, um, so if this is a solid masonry wall with vents top and bottom, and this is our timber wall here. So when the sun's shining in, hitting the wall, the wall is storing that heat and it, take, it will take time so that at night that heat will come out, come through the wall and into the building. But also during the day, this space between the window and the wall can warm up and that warm air will rise and come out through the vents which will pull cool air in so you get what's called a convection loop happening. So that's the basics of what a trom wall is. Now, uh, I just want to make the important point that this only works, these sun angles and using the eave overhang, it only works on the north wall of the house. That's why the north aspect and good solar access is really important for a passive solar house. Now let's compare that to the situation in the existing house next to the Greeny flat. So in that case, here's the ground level. Now, here we have a, uh, a concrete footing and a masonry foundation wall. And then there's a tim piece of timber there, and then there's timber floor joists that sit here. Uh, and then the floor sits on top of that. The wall is here. And then the roof structure, the ceiling is here. The roof structure is all timber, including the ceiling joists. And then, so this is the ceiling. And then the tile roof 
sits on top of that and it's got it here. Um, so, and then let's, uh, let's, put, let's put a window in here. And so similar to the granny flat, the, the basics of passive solar design still work. So in the winter time, we've got, remember this is the north wall. We've got sun coming in through the window. Um, and in the summertime, we've got sun being kept out by the eave overhang. Now, what we don't have here is thermal mass. Um, so when the sun shines in, it'll, it'll warm the space nicely during the day, but there's nothing to store that heat. So it won't help to keep it warm during the night. So a building like this will tend to get much colder at night than a building like this. So how can we apply the, the Trom wall idea to the um, existing house? Well. We don't have any thermal mass in the basic structure of the house, but what we do have is, a, is an open fireplace with a chimney. So let me just draw that in, something like this. So, <clears throat> so this is all brick. It's only in a small area where the, where the fire is and the chimney is, of course. But there is quite a lot of masonry and quite a lot of thermal mass in this structure. Now, as an open fire, it's a terrible thing in terms of the energy efficiency of the house because what happens is when a fire is burning in here, obviously, you know, the, the smoke and the heat arising up the chimney and that draws a lot of warm air out of the house. It also heats all of this masonry so that after the fire goes out this chimney will continue to suck warm air out of the house pretty much all night long. So what we um, intend to do with the, greenie, with the uh, house next to the greenie flat is knock the chimney down to ceiling height and close it off. So obviously we won't be able to use it as an open fire anymore, so we'll get rid of that. And then we're actually going to put a window right in front of where the chimney is, so that that window will act like a, like a trom wall. Then the fireplace then becomes the masonry portion of the trom wall. So we have this little space behind. The sun shines in and warms the masonry of the fireplace and stores that heat. Now, um, there's also a bit of airspace all around that chimney so we'll probably add in some vents on the face of the of the above the mantelpiece so that we can get that convection loop happening where the draw air in and then warm air will come out so that's how we're um, oh, and by the way this is not just sitting on the floor it goes down to a, a whole foundation under the house but that's how we're planning to use the existing fireplace to make a trom wall so we can take advantage of the thermal mass of that fireplace that's already there um, to make up for the fact that the existing house basically doesn't have any thermal mass in it. So here we're looking at the north wall of the house and you can see the chimney behind the timber framing and we're in the process of cutting the timber framing out uh, to frame in the new window. It's a really important point to note that Thermal mass is only useful if it's inside the insulated thermal boundary of the building. Here you can see we've painted the brickwork black to help it absorb more heat and we've insulated around the rest of that framework below the old chimney. And here we're putting in a new double glazed window with frosted glass so that you can't see through and see that there's a, a chimney behind. So that's how we're planning to use that existing chimney as a trom wall to take advantage of the thermal mass that's in the building already. And uh, now don't forget you can learn all about passive solar design on our website at greenyflat.com.au. In the next episode we're going to talk about how we plan to use the rest of this north wall as a solar air heater. So thanks for watching and see you next time.